Hello and uh, welcome to the second part of my Pillars of Eternity Blind well through hopefully with both of the expansions in the last episode we rolled our character I have chosen a to play as a cipher and we'll see how it goes in the last episode then we started the adventure at the caravan which were later attacked by some kind of barbarians and we ended up in the ruins of Silandlis where we needed to run away and follow to follow our path to Gilded Vale after some uh, fights and getting through small puzzles we got outside of the Silandlins ruins and then we found a big bad guy who did perform some kind of ritual and after that we found out unconscious and started the story started to unfold. So let's continue today to Gilded Vale. So this is our character at the moment and we have from one misstep a sever burn and our abilities and talents. So yeah, let's go to the world map and to Veil Lord first and then to Gilded Veil. Vale. Just a quick nap. I've reached the Veilwood. The village of Gilded Vale just lies beyond. And we had also some kind of uh, visions in the last episode. And we'll find out what's all this about. Certainly. I've lost my companion during the ritual and now I have to go slowly Silence alone. Silence surrounds me. You have to go with the scouting if you want to find some hidden stuff. Well, it makes your character to go very slowly. But yeah, sometimes silence surrounds me. I'm just too cautious to not lose anything at all. There was a ghost. Well, 
I think. Um, sorry. Yeah, okay. My first death. Let's go again. And get a little bit better gear for my inventory. Because it looks like I got hit a lot in my leather armor. this and we will need a little bit of deflection which is I think the best this one certainly see a lot of ghosts. It's probably... Let's check the Xorips again. But first the young wolf. Just a quick nap. Shattered pieces of crate are strewn across the dirt along with a few muddy vegetables.
The grass is still flattened behind the wagon's wheels. Barrels of cabbages, potatoes and squash have been overturned and abandoned. Let's see what we have here. Scroll of Tango Food. And... Silver? What is this? Let's check out the cave. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Okay. We'll see. Probably I'll die again. <laughs> yes. Okay. I have to visit the bear. A little bit later. So let's go back and try to attack the Xorips. This should be possible to get them. Certainly. If not, I might go first for the village. Let us end this! Okay. I'd welcome some rest. Thankfully, getting the Kickstarter item saved my ass.
the cap the same this one looks better the struts and sprouts are large enough to be the ribs and vertebrae of a dragon okay probably the best option now is to go let me see this sharp eyes and keen ears yeah Let's check also. Sharp eyes and a little bit ears. here. Silence surrounds me. To and whispers here. and shadows. Outlaw. Shall we get some shut eye? Sword, maybe. Let's see. It's a little bit slower, but let's see. No. Let's use this for a while. Okay, I think I go to the to whispers city and shadows. And hope to get another person with me. Silence surrounds me. Hmm. Let's speak with Nantum. Welcome. This man appears to be hurriedly dismantling his camp in quick jerky movements. He looks up as you approach. His expression stands and drawn. Greetings. He says a little breathless. On your very south, is it? Don't get too many of your sort coming out this way, meaning no offense. Suppose you're headed for the fiance bay. 
he wipes his brow, turning to face you. The sooner you're clear of these woods, the better I think. Let's go diplomatic. I'm only passing through, I mean to reach Gilded Vale. You're headed the right way, shouldn't be too much further, and there's no missing if it if you keep to the road. But you'll want to keep clear of this place after that. I We were just attacked north of here. Me and a friend of mine, we came out here to hunt some deer. Came up on a bear instead. Great monster of thing, and barely he didn't make it. He shakes his head. I don't know what I will tell his wife. In any case, this forest already cost me a friend. I'm heading home before it takes anything else. Who are you? Name's Nonton. Born and raised in Gilded Vale. I haven't had a spot of luck since his face twits. Luckier than Pearly, I suppose. In any case, this forest already cost me a friend. What happened to your friend? We didn't see it coming. Nonton's voice shakes a little as he speaks. We were following a stack, Pearly. He saw something in the brambles and we went tearing off after it. We all but stumbled into the cave. Poor Pearly didn't stand the chance. The bear was on top of him before we knew what was happening. The best the beasts will take what they will, I suppose, he smiles sadly. And this time Gilavain favor fell upon the bear. Where do you, where did you find this bear? In a cave ways up that way. He turns to the point to the northwest. I wouldn't seek it out if I were you. It was a great brute of a beast. Would hate to hear that it took another life. Well met, friend. Okay, the fi F5 still works as always. Northwest to Geren's Grasp, south to Gilded Vale. What is this young wolf? Let's see this. Welcome some rest. Yeah, I know. Just wait a little bit.
What have we here? Necklace. Perceptions plus two. Okay. see let's go to the city first so I can get a little bit of sleep and then continue to exploration of real wood Journal the Gilded Vale. I have reached the Vale with the village of Gilded Vale just lies beyond. I finally reached the Gilded Vale. It's not quite what I was expecting. It's uh night. To whispers and shadows. Let's go find an inn first. Okay, here is the inn. What do we have here? You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here. He glances at the gnarled leafless monstrosity of the trees next to him. Uh, I feel at home already. Of course, we'll need to make some inquiries first. The inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollowborn child? That's a rather personal question. And an important one nevertheless. Lord Raderick has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. He steps to the side and inclines his head ever so slightly towards the deformed tree. His lordship's wife is with child and do any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn just southwest of here. I've been feeling strange ever since the close call with the Biavak. Is there someone in town who could help? 
Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's important that everyone in Gildenwell understood our rules. You said something about Hollowborn and Wademan's legacy before. He blinks. I forget that you foreigners do not have these cures in your homelands. The Hollowborn have been a scourge upon the deer root for almost 15 years now. He lowers his voice to a whisper. Children born without souls. He shakes his head. Pitiful, dumb things that breathe. Barely. But do not truly live. Some say the Hollowborn are a disease. Some say they are a punishment for the, from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows. But they began spreading after the sands war, and so the name Wademan's legacy stuck in honor of that foul, blasphemous pretender. His voice shakes with vitriol. Lord Redrick's decree may seem strict at times, but he has our best interests at heart. Before I got here, I saw several people conducting a strange samurai near some ruins. He regards you carefully. You'll want to mind where you're mentioned at. Trespassing on and within ruins is illegal, not to mention dangerous. You probably saw someone attempting some new ritual to appease the gods. People will try anything these days. Berath, have mercy. We certainly have. I don't think so. Just as they finish, there was a biavak. He polishes his spectacle on his sleeves. If you'd been that close to a biavak, you wouldn't be standing here. Keep out of... Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. Does this affect the Lord's offer to new settlers? I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn, or a stable for all I care. Find me afterwards. I will know more soon enough. What do you mean? You come to us at the time of mourning. The legacy has struck at the heart of Gilded Vale. Our efforts to redeem ourselves in the eyes of Berath must be redoubled. He sets a steady gaze upon you. What happened? He shrugs so on bony shoulder. I will know more details when the messengers arrive. The vagaries of childbirth, perhaps, but that is not your concern. Or I will. Visions and whispers. Seek help for your condition. The magistrate advised me to get some rest while I wait for permanent accommodations. That may be the best thing to put an end to this illness as well. Uh, 
Argad, where is that twisted from? I'm afraid I still can't help you find a residence here. Lord Redrickson was deemed a hollowborn. This makes circumstances even more fraught than before. Tell me more about Lord Redrick. He comes from a line of nobles who have defended these lands since Eddard times. Redrick II was an early supporter of Deerwood and independence during the revolution, and the current lord's father perished in the Saints' War. Hollowborn began appearing in the Deerwood shortly after the war's end. Lord Redrick has taken it upon himself to purge the curse from Gilded Vale. His measures have been severe but necessary. Unfortunately, it may not have been enough. If the bells were an indication, the Saints' War? Our age's most egregious example of man's madness. Fifteen years ago, the people of Retzeras decided that Vaiden, their living saint, was the literal incarnation of the god Eothas. Argot wrinkles his pinched nose. This supposed saint took it upon himself to liberate the Deerwood. Supposedly from alien agencies to less worthy gods, but I've never known an army to conquer a land for its people. Peoples are good. The war lasted about a year, but you can guess what uh, that year did to the worship of Elthas in the Deerwood. Lord Redrick's forebears had all been Eotesians, but after his father fell defending us from those fanatics, he personally saw that the temple of Eotas here in town was shut down. He points a few ruined walls near the tree. If you have any other question, don't hesitate to ask. I'd like to know more about the Gilded Vale. We are a frontier village, as are most settlements in the Deerwood. Gilded Vale hasn't grown much since its establishment in the colonial days, and the last 15 years have been our population shrink further. He takes in the ramshackle houses and half fallen fences. Hence our requirement of fresh settlers. Why has Gilded Vale population been shrinking? Wade Wen's legacy, of course. Many women have had difficulty bearing healthy children of late. A few years ago, Lord Redrick decreed that no mothers of Hollowborn are to be allowed in Gilded Vale. His mouth tightens into a firm line. His lordship dealt swiftly with the objectors. It may be harsh, but if it purges us of these cures, it's... Is it not worth it? Tell me about those runes behind the tree. That's what's left of the Temple of Eotas, his lips pucker. Lord Redrick forbade worship of the dead god after the Saints War. It's been abandoned for almost 15 years, but there are plans to rededicate it to Berath, the god of life and death. Enough about Gilded Vale. And... goodbye. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Scattered between the roots are braces of twine and beads, wilting flowers, and notes half erased by the rains. Move along. Speak to her good if you're in need of instruction. Silence surrounds me. I heard they fended off another attack on the Lord Redick's keep. Careful if you hate east, guards portal the eastern wood but not the Black Meadow. The Black Hound is a fine place to sit and have a smoke. Uh, 
these are the Kickstarter pledges and pieces. Uh, speaking to them does not give you any hints to the main quest or the game as well, but uh, some of their speeches are really interesting and they have a nice backstory written all by all the pledgers. Uh, I probably will be skipping this, this playthrough. Now here's something. Potion of Spirit Shield, what is this? Damage reduction and concentration for 45 seconds. I think this might be interesting to have here. Hmm. Let's put it here. Nah, I like it. This much more. We need the divines are crude carvings of a sun rising over three stars. The Bloodhound Inn's a fine place to sit and have a smoke. To whispers and shadows. Okay, let's talk to Eder. Were you looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. Looking for anyone who can help me feel better. He gives an understanding note as he takes a long drag from his pipe. My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. The man smiles broadly. Welcome to our lovely village. So... Let's... Check this first. Oh no, let's go to the inn. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Folk like you might do better in Defiance Bay. Feels like we've been seeing more bandits uh, along the roads of late. Careful if you had is God's Patrol is turn, but not the Black Meadow. Okay, they start to repeat itself. Been thinking about joining family over in their fort. They have it far better than us.
So the famous Black Hunt Inn. Uh, these bones are covered in tiny bite marks. <coughs> this hound stares intently at the covered window, head cocked as if waiting to hear a particular sound. It looks up when you approach and whines a low note. Tail wagging slightly. Let's pet the dog. The dog tail stumps happily against the floorboards. Uh, no pet. Silence surrounds me. Another Kickstarter, guys. Hmm. The Deerwood Part 1 Early Colonial History. Let's see that. Um. Let's put it here for a while. And no stealing yet. Let's role play a little bit, honest guy. Grab a drink, friend. Not much else of worth in this town, says the woman from Tyne. Hey! We said we wouldn't mention Tyne. Silence surrounds me. And more Becker and PCs. <laughs> Development of a crossable knight, part two. Send their ranks. And where are you then? Another fool to come to answer Redrick's invitation? Our great lord had my sister run out of town after the boy was born. She was the only family I had left. Not sure where she is now. Blazes, I need another drink. Silence surrounds me. Nice and dry in here. Wish we had some installs in here. I wish that too. Let's speak with the server. I just carried the dishes. You'll want to talk to Pascal at the counter there. Good to see new faces around. Feels like the village gets smaller by the day. A milk and a grain. Some kind of brown slob is congealing in these dishes. It smells burnt.
The floorboards are sticky with spills that no one has bothered to clean. Wish we had some monsters in here. The food's here been off lately. Things rats have gotten into the larder. Looks like nothing is hidden here. Spoons hang by the fire, coated in brownish gunk. Uh, stealing? Uh, no. Not yet. Hello. Oh, greetings and welcome to the Black Hound Inn. The innkeeper bows her head curtly. Please sit, where do you like? Would you like a drink or a room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't offer much by way of a good meal today. She sighs, unless you're fond of cold porridge. Mm. I'd like to know more about the Black Hound. Really? Well, let me see. The actual building's been here for years, but the Bloodhound fairly new. We get a lot of new faces in here too. Fewer than we used to, I'll admit. I used to work the tables actually, until the old owner up and left. Nobody's sure what happened to him, and when left his poor hound behind. That's the name, see, the Bloodhound. It's still sitting upstairs, pinning after him. Poor old girl. You only sell porridge? It isn't by choice, I assure you. We used to serve some of the finest meals in the Direwood. We had a damnable r run of luck is all. It's been a bad season for the crops and we're running low on supplies. I sent Tenfrit up north to stock up. Tenfrit's our cook, you see. An artist with a good roast, but it's been days since he was supposed to return and we haven't seen any sign of him. She sighs again. Uh, I've only just taken over from the last owner myself. I don't know what I'll do if he doesn't turn up. I could try to find him for you. Really? Her face brightens. I'd be grateful if you... I'd be grateful to you if you did. He was traveling through the veil boot. It's probably nothing. A broken wheel, maybe. But I do worry. You see him safely home and I think everyone in here would sing you praises. Nobody much likes my porridge. I could use some reliable help. Do you know of anyone looking for work? Hmm, oh, well, I wouldn't say I can speak from experience, but we do have a certain source coming by looking for work from time to time. If you want to hire someone on, I'd be happy to send them your way. Let me see what I have to work with. I don't have yet money for that. From the party management screen you can see what your allies are up to when they aren't in the party. If you assign them to adventures, you can see how long it will take for them to complete their assignment. Recalling a companion or adventurer from a mission before it is completed will forfeit all of the potential rewards for the assignment. Late for dinner. Find Tenfrith. Side quest. Much like the rest of town, Gilded Vales Inn has seen better days. It doesn't get much business, but the inn master chef usually draws in a small but steady amount of visitors. That is, until his recent disappearance during a routine trip north for supplies. The innkeeper has suggested he might have come to harm on the road through the Vale route and is seeking aid in seeing the chef safely returned. Sharp eyes and keen ears.
Greetings. Hello again. Anything I can do for you? We still have rooms open and it's never too early for a drink. Uh, could I see what you have for sale? Of course, we're running a little short on goods this day, but we ought to have more soon. Beer, milk, grain and campus camping supplies. Not needed yet. Hello. I'd like a room, please. Of course, we keep them nice and tidy. Inns allows characters to rest without using camping supplies. Cheap rooms are usually available, but if you have copper to spend, you may consider the more expensive options. The bonuses they provide last for a long time and affect the entire party. Uh, let's go for the common room first. Rest. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers, blanketed with a suffocating anxiety. You open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows tree, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like mouldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open and they are empty and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watch her. You jolt awake, the full smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweet runs down your face in thick droplets and your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman's one more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. 24 9 experience. In my dream I heard a message from a woman, a dead woman, hanging from the tree that stands at the center of Gilded Vale. It may be nothing more than a dream, but there was a strange realism to it. I need to return there and see for myself whether there was anything to it. My condition has not lifted and I am not sleeping well. Let's go out. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Let's search a little bit here as well. The windows are clouded with the haze of accumulated smoke and cooking grease. The Black Hound Inn.
You'd think these rains would be a boon for the crops. More backer NPCs. I heard they fended off another attack on Lord Redrick's keep. To whispers and shadows. Despite the rains, the stalks feel as dry as stiff as a locust's husk. Folk like you might do better in Defiance Bay. Yes. Silence surrounds me. You see four people gathered by the door today in their raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reaching its climax. The first figure raises his hands for calm. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Everyone calm down. Whatever this is about, I'm sure it's uh, no reaction. One of the other men glares at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from the ring, but his gaze is focused. We're humble folk, but we're no fools. Not like he thinks. Mocking us while we shelters in our village. We don't take that kind of talk from foreigners. Especially not Edirans. Go on. Say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fire you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head! This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. We've nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. This is unnecessary. Wouldn't you rather be inside drinking than our than out here arguing? We don't want your charity either, foreigner. They squint at you through red bleary eyes. It sounds suspiciously like you're defending him. Oh shit. As the last of the attackers falls, the elf turns to you, the tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. I'm glad I could help. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood and you note the remains of frank embroidery on his clothes. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months travel, but the leatherwork beneath is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. Mm. 
how did you manage to get stuck out here? He laughs uncomfortably. That is something of a long story. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Oh, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious, what exactly did you find there? Several hooded figures operating a strange machine. Alot goggles at you silently, apparently assessing your earnestness. Finally, he gives you a clipped awkward laugh. You do manage to find yourself in rather interesting predicaments. Just how did you manage to cross those three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. You did make a rather lewd suggestion regarding one of the aggressors and his own sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and edges his sleeves. As I try to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pins and the accent doesn't help. I heard the same thing. For just a moment he looks as if he's about to say something else. His expression brightens with mischief. But before he can speak, he forces a tight smile, biting his lips so hard you expect to see blood. Finally, his face relaxes, and he shakes his head. I should speak more clearly next time, my apologies. What are you doing in Gilded Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the Magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. And you? Like you said, I'm also a settler. Indeed. In that case, welcome to Gilded Vale, a true refuge from civilization. You don't look like exactly like a sectler. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. I should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. So do I. Well, let's go then. Excellent. I shall follow you. Okay, I have a mage in my party. Yay. How may I help? Wizards have the ability to learn a staggering number of spells, but they are always limited by the capacity of the grimoires. At any given time, a grimoire may only contain four spells of each level. Click on a spell in the right panel to remove it from the grimoire. 
add spells to empty slots by clicking on the spell in the left panel. Check his equipment. A lot of leather armor. What is overseeing? Perception 12 and... Oh. i give you that for a while. And let's talk to him. Elot looks at you with quiet attentiveness. How may I be of service? Tell me about Edir. I've been gone for more than a year now, but I suspect I always think of the forests and fields of Edir as home. We have thousands of years of history and traditions behind us, and there's a sense of dignity and responsibility that comes with that. He frowns. Of course, there's a baggage as well. Our imperial past is still fresh in the minds of many, as you may have noticed. Has it been difficult to adjust to the dear wood? People here are informal, hot blooded. His mouth twists into a wry smirk, more attentive to insult than to duty, but as long as one avoids provocation, it's easy enough to get along. He steeples his fingers. I've gotten accustomed enough to keeping my thoughts to myself anyway. How long were you in the Gilded Vale? He shrugs, fidgeting with the helm on of his sleeve. Not much longer than you. As you saw, it was hardly the haven that has been advertised. Any thoughts on what I should do next? Well, you're in charge here. As far as I'm concerned, that any place is better than Gilded Vale. That's all then. Um, let's check this and then go for Edder again. Certainly. Certainly. Sharp eyes and keen ears. The Black Hound is a fine place to sit and have a smoke. Sharp eyes and keen ears. Silence surrounds me. Mm. 
This one doc aired book is titled Travels Upon the Zelt Glass Sea. There is an etched illustration of a vast find Leviathan. Let's pick with Ofra. A dear wooden woman is standing in front of the fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself, or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly at you as you enter. Welcome. Well, finally, I was starting to think. The woman makes a startled noise once she turns around and sees you. Oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Uh, can I help you? Nice cat. Afra smiles brightly. Oh, thank you. She's a sweetheart. Keeps the house clear of mice too. I've just arrived in Gilded Vale. I thought I'd get to know the locals. Were you with one of the caravans? She looks at you, hopefully. Master Odemas, by chance? Uh, you knew Odema? Well, no more than most here, I'd say. He doesn't usually come this way, but they say he's a reliable old fellow. She pauses. Rose furrowing. Wait, why do you say new? I'm sorry, but the caravan was attacked. I was the only one to survive. Alfra comes her mouth with the hands, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments she can manage nothing but a strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew. I told her uh, it was a dangerous path to take. Kalisha was always so certain she could take on any danger. Oh, Frasniffs. Oh, my poor sister. I'm sorry, stranger. I just... I can't believe she's gone. If only I hadn't called her here. If I hadn't written to her. She might still be alive somewhere. Ofra's face crumples and solitary tears slides down her cheek. Galicia mentions that she thought you needed help. Perhaps I can provide some assistance. Ofra looks at you with some surprise before doubling at her nose with the sleeve. That's kind of you to offer, but I don't know if I could impose this on you. It's not a small favor. Ofra wipes at her eyes. I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kalisha as much as I could, but all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been so less empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Redrick, he's exiled all of them, calling it a sign of the gods' disfavor. She sniffs. With my head third gone, I don't know. I'd manage if I lost my home too. I hoped Kalisa could help me. They say Ranga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn. But she moved south to Anslok Compass two seasons ago. The journey too far from me. I can't make it as I am, but I don't have anyone else. Now with Kalisha gone, more tears run down her face. Please, can you help me? I'll find Ranga for you. You have earned a reputation. Reputations can be held with communities of, or factions in the Eastern Niche and will affect how members of that group respond to you. In some cases, friends or enemies of those groups will also react to your affiliation. Helping a group will increase your positive reputation with that group. Harming a group will increase your negative reputation. 
It is possible to have a mix of positive and negative reputation with a group if you help and harm them in equal measure. Alpha blinks eye wide. You will. Oh, gods bless you. Here, I'll give you current to pain her with. You needn't trouble yourself with that. I think it's a drink she fashions out of. Well, I'm not sure, but it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. And Slug's compass is what we call the lagoon to the south. You'll have to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps me from trying it myself. She claps her hands together. Thank you again, truly. You'll be saying us both. She sets a hand on her stomach, smiling through her tears. Travel to Insulin Compass and speak to Mother Ranga. In Gilded Well, I met Kalisha, sister, uh, Kalisha's sister Aufra. Aufra is expecting a child and is worried that she too will give birth to a Holborn, as have many unlucky women before her. She has asked me to travel south to Anslug's compass, where I can find Ranga, a midwife who is said to know a way to ensure that Elfra's child retains its soul. To whispers and shadows. Silence surrounds me. Silence surrounds me. Hmm? I have received confirmation that Lord Radric's heir was not born well. My lord has issued an injunction on all new homesteads until he can be assured that the village has been cleansed of all Aeothasians and whatever other undesirables that have brought this curse upon his lands. It would be best if you left town as soon as possible. I would suggest returning to your old home. There will be no place for you here. You may stay at the inn until you can make the necessary arrangements, but I would not advise remaining long. I expect Lord Radric will be most thorough in his efforts to purify this place. This is outrageous. I came a long way. Then you should have no problem continuing on. Trust me when I say it would be best if you were not here when Lord Radric's men are dispatched from his alt. He will be looking for anyone who might have brought the legacy upon us, whose very presence might pollute his wife's womb. They will extinguish all possibilities. Certainly. The man smiles broadly. Welcome to our lovely village. Nice and quiet. Caldara de Berenzi. The squat, distant body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin crooked bow that sacks at the tuck of her nose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lulls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her that casts some life on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warmth to it and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it, not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out for the woman.
you take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on, our, on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind. You no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, it is both, I think. Yes? How are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy even. To not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I, wherever here may be. I think I survived a Vyavak. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul, but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Call them. Those days are all behind me, no? I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, a stout consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and the watcher you will stay. What's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair, and here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. 
A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. What did you mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. You said souls break apart over time. Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die, and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence, and stay together through some force of defiance, at least for a time. But they all succumb eventually, I think. She clicks her tongue. I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi, of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What happens to you? She laughs, a rasping choked cackle escaping between rows of buttery yellow teeth, causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> oh, come now! Such a question! As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling! Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer! <laughs> Well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months. Looked high and low for impurities. Tested her valence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. What's an animancer? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals tell it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met, empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turn their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. How soon we forget when we're afraid. 
It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things, but their recent caution will leave them behind, I fear. I had other questions. Of course, dear. Or not. Very well. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Calera closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the nose. And your surrounding seems to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. Eloth looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you alright? You seemed uh, lost just now. A lot of experience. Yes, I'm fine. He folds his arm. That's good to know, but I don't suppose you could tell me what was all about. I'm a watcher. His arch eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin. And I expect this has something to do with the hooded figures in the ranks, huh? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about Watchers? Only that they're rare and that they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions. He coughs. As you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. Sadno I sold west of southeast of Gilded Vale, past the Black Meadow. I will have to travel there if I am to speak with Marvald. Okay, let's quick save and check the level up. Let's 
use this. And a lot. Let's take this too. Sharp eyes and keen ears. The smell of pipe smoke at once earthy and sweet winds. Its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw colored hair leaning against the mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Oh, could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Elot Thrones, is that what do you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. What was that about a dwarf? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I think you oughta. What makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? He looks at you a moment. Uh, his bro arch, his smirk broadens. Well, I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack, I took you for a radric at first. Impossible. I don't drool half as much. Ha, huh, so you're already familiar. Still, you'd have to forgive my curiosity around here. We prefer to turn a blind eye to our death. Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Best not use that word around here. There'd be any number of Radric bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, Animancers, Watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here, Radric especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, Maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. You think you're going to be hanged? The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. The war? 
Saints War. Only one in my lifetime. Fella decided he is the living incarnation of Elthas, overthrows Red Seras, marches on Dirwood. So we gave him a Dirwood and Hello. What's a Dirwood and Hello? We blew him up. He smiles at this, but it is the smile of one recounting a joke for effect rather than an enjoyment. Who is Elthas? God of repair and redemption, formally. Anyhow, maybe they call him something different where you're from. I had other questions. I got time. Why was your headman hanged? God involved. Redrick sent men down here the other day, say they had it on good authority. Someone in town was working with Kalf, plotting Redrick's overthrow. Say it if he didn't come forward right then, and there they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward, so Thvilin, that's my headman. He steps up and say it's him. They took him at his word. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later, if not for plotting against Redrick, then for protecting me. What does your tone have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, that was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethus. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethus isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethus. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethus worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. Elot glances at you and lowers his voice. You can see why I was eager to leave. Who's Kalth? Someone who got tired of all the hangings. He is on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. If you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? He gives a half smile. Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out, just haven't figured where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that I don't think Wavedwen's legacy started with Wavedwen. Uh, we could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Kednua. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. But, truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. There's a fine reason, if I ever had one. Alright then, guess I'll do some sightseeing. Long as you're not the one picking the sights. Let's get going.
Edder has agreed to travel with me. He seems to have some questions. He thought a watcher might be able to answer. After telling Edder that I was headed for Sednua to see its lord, an old watcher named Merveld, he expressed that there were things he'd like to ask Merveld as well. Hey. I hope that old Watcher is still there, been years since I heard anything about him. What is it you want to ask this Watcher in Kednua? Just some things about the past, about the war. I'd been thinking I missed my chance to find out what I wanted to know, that old Watcher told. He opens up some new possibilities. I want to ask something about you. If you're sure. What did you do before this? Oh, other than the war, I never strayed too far from where you found me. Farming, mostly. I was never much for cities. Never learned to trade. In my younger days, I thought I was going to go preach the word of Aethys. Just in our temple there. My parents encouraged it. I made so much trouble for them growing up, they used to say it'd be best if I got in good with the God of Redemption. Of course, us blowing him up probably didn't help my chances there. But if anybody'd forgive you for blowing him up, it'd be Aethys. Did the people of Gilded Way really try to kill you? They, uh... <laughs> they did. It was strange timing, because we just won the war. They celebrated when I came home. There was music and... Dancing. Trumbull used half his grain making this big honey cake. I still dream about that cake. Like having the best lover of your life, but only for one night. And they were all sorry to hear about my brother. It took a while for word of the purges to reach us. Aethasians being murdered in the streets. Cold morn and the like. No way would they let something like that happen in Gilded Vale. That's what they all said. But the weeks went by and the purges spread. Pretty soon they weren't so sure my brother fought for Deerwood. And they weren't so sure I did. It caught me by surprise after all the celebrating. <laughs> Should have seen it coming after the tailor said he was going to fit me for some new clothes, but then all he wanted was my neck measurement. Really? Nah, not that last part. But you had to think about it. Says a lot about the place I've been calling home all these years. Why did you stay for so long in a town that hated you? Well, I'm sure my parents are still wondering the same thing. The Aeothasian purges were like this madness had come over the town. Like a disease. Seems like when you see something like that, your instinct is to wait for it to pass. Even when you know it probably won't. The family whose farm I worked on, they had a little hollowborn girl. When they heard the Animancers had this cure, the salvation it was called, they went running. This salvation, they were putting animal souls in children. You might have heard about it, giving them enough personality to care for themselves. Well, you can guess how that turned out. Matter of time, the children broke down, became wild things, monsters. Anyway, these farmers put the family dog's soul in their little girl. For a while, the girl, she's making eye contact, she's feeding herself, albeit in a kind of messy way. And one day, she snaps. They found her gnawing on her brother's bones. Had to chain her up, put her in a cow pen. Well, the mother, she wouldn't have anything to do with the girl after that. But the father, he'd visit every day, feed her chickens, toss water on her once in a while to get the dirt off. Most of the village, they'd whisper about him. Poor man, they'd say, sick with grief. He was just waiting for his daughter to look up one day and recognize her papa. He was waiting for her to get better. Didn't understand that at the time, of course, but these days I think about him a lot. Do you have any family? Just my parents now. They took a ship back to Eder when the purge started. Wanted me to go with them, but I didn't see things like they did. Been a long time since I've seen them. 
I really should visit, but for some reason I haven't much felt like leaving home. Good thing they chased me out, so, or I might never left. I want to ask you about something else. What's on your mind? I was wondering about Eathas. It makes two of us. What is there to know about Eathas? If you're looking to find religion, maybe you want to start with a god that hasn't been burned to dust, but I won't stop you. Eathas, he was a young man with a silver crown. Carried a candle around with him. <laughs> Sounds like I'm giving a bad eulogy here. He was, well, he was a lot of different things to different people, I guess. Rebirth, redemption, light. Out in the country, he is gone. The farmer who helps all things pass, seasons and people both. He watches over the week, does gone. Sees imbalances made right. You could see why all the copperless rowdies around here might take a liking to someone like that. He was real popular here for a time. These days you won't find too many worshippers Eotas in the open. It's hard to know who still does it in private and who's given up. Feels like I'm the last one sometimes, he smirks. If that's the case, he deserves all the mourning. Why do you still worship Eotas? In my way. I don't suppose he expects me to show up at his temple these days. Not much left to do for him other than keep his memory alive and keep hoping that he's just been playing a joke on all of us these past 15 years. Far as I know, he hasn't said anything to anybody since the good hammer detonated. Why worship him then? He grimaces. Well, if it turns out he's not dead and I gave up on him, I'd have betrayed my god twice. Even the god of redemption has got to have standards. I'd probably be reborn as a fat Amau Mouse horse. That's not really it, no. Not all of it, anyway. He casts a sidelong glance. Quest, it's more... I still believe in the things he believed in. I just hope his death doesn't mean the death of those things as well. Sometimes it looks that way. Why do you choose to worship Veotas in the beginning? Raised that way. My family's been Aeothasian going way back. I suppose it wasn't much of a choice at first. I don't know for sure why my family started worshipping him. Probably because of gone looking after folks like us. He looks you in the eye, conspirational. Could just as well be that my ancestors did something so bad only Aeothas could forgive. It would explain a lot of a lot of about where I got some of my less respectable traits. Did you only worship him because that's how you were raised? Mm-mm. There was something I genuinely liked about Aethys. Always. Like he understood people better than the other gods. Knew all our flaws and weaknesses and accepted us for that. Folks are at their worst when they're afraid. A god like Aethys, he made you realize there was nothing to fear. He made you a better person. Of course, he goes away for a few years, and look what happens. What made you think Wadewen didn't speak for Aethys? Was his actions. Not when he started his rebellion, and not even when he took over Raed Ceres. It was when he sent his armies into Deerwood. Up to that point, he was sticking up for his people. That's what Eatas does. Least the gone part of him. Those farmers were starving and their government meant didn't lift the finger. I figured it was if it wasn't Eatas himself, at least he had the right idea. But then he sent armies across the border, even crossed it himself in the in the end. Word was he was chasing refugees that escaped the rebellion wanted to punish them and punish us for allowing them to live here. That, that just didn't fit for me. Those are the deeds of a vengeful god, Skan, or, or Vedika maybe. Or just a man who'd lost his sense. I still have trouble believing it, but there's no one left to ask if it's true. 
Tell me about the perch. You sure you don't want to talk about something more pleasant? Like the War of Black Trees or the Legacy or something? It's eye-opening, seeing just how naked you are when you've got no guts to protect you. The Saints' War was a hard time to be a Dirwooden. People thought it was the end times. They talk big about how we were gonna defeat the god, but I don't think there was a man from here to the White March didn't think he was gonna die. It does something to you, thinking you're going gonna die at someone else's hands. There's a rage that comes indignation. Imagine a whole country full of that. Might have been called Morn that started it. Town near the borders. They let wait when march right on though on through rest of Deerwood cursed their names till the end of the war. Some say it was the Eltasians there that persuaded the town not to oppose the army. Others say it was just cowardice. It was like the legacy that way. No one knew the real reason, so they just picked whichever one best suited what they wanted to believe. Either way, that town was burning before the first ashes of Aetas hit the ground, and it felt good to the people here to be in control after being so helpless. So the fire spread, a lot of us Aetasians went the way of our god. There were claims from the church of Magran that she'd actually commanded the purges. I found it hard to believe, sounded to me like people doing what they wanted, wrapping their gut around it like she was a cloak. Then again, that's what I thought about Wade then. I want to ask you about something else. What's on your mind? Well, let's keep moving. Let's leave it at that. Oh? So, let's search. Or not. I think... This will be it for now. We made some stuff in continuing the main quests and and I think I give you another cap. No, this one is better. Much better. Okay. So, anyway. This is where we end our second episode. We got most of the stuff done in Gilded Vale. Took some quests, but we need to take... We need to look into a few more houses before continuing and maybe then check the Temple of Eltas downstairs. But that will be at some other time. Thank you for watching and see you soon.